Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to our session. Uh, I'm very, very pleased to, to see everybody here. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, it's lovely to see all of you. We have had around 70 people who have um, subscribed to the event. And uh, I can see already that several of you have managed to join us live here. And we still have people coming in, uh, but I wanted to thank everybody for um, your continuing interest and support, first of all, on the basis of attending all our online events and all our efforts. And it is important to say that these efforts have been driven by community spirit. Um, so I know that today we have a diverse audience coming from higher education, but also beyond that. So please feel free to introduce yourselves in the chat and let us know where you're coming from. Uh, we really want to know um, your location, your interests, and a few things about yourselves. And so I'll make a start to break the ice. I'm Constantina Marzuko. I work at the Robert Gordon University. I'm a role is Teaching Excellence Fellow. I am the founder of the Mindsets Group, uh, which operates via the Global 1HT Network. And before we start the session, uh, I'd like to offer a short introduction actually to the effort we're making here in Mindsets. Uh, it is an open community free to join and focuses on information, digital and media literacy. And the things we examine um, is really around how we can support students to develop those skills uh, as they transition into and out of higher education. And so the communities of interest to anyone who is involved with students, educators, librarians, and um, learning and teaching support professionals, even policymakers, but ultimately the students themselves as well. So we are interested in many different themes from diversity to inclusion. Um, and we want to learn from you and can empower each other to continue learning. So if you're passionate about any of these themes, uh, information literacy, digital literacy, and media literacy. Please do get in touch. You can see the details here. You can see how you can join um, our email. And also we have a YouTube channel where we have uploaded previous presentations and you may want to have a look at those. Right, so um, that was um, a little bit of an introduction, I would say. I think um, we have more people now who have joined the session. So today we have a fantastic topic and we're very, very pleased to have with us two great speakers to talk about their work on Step Up to Masters. Step Up to Masters is a resource that addresses the transition of students to master's level study. And it is a program that was developed in 2020. I think that was very much into the start of the pandemic. So very, very, a uh, topical area important, and this work has been developed at Leeds University Library. I can say that the resource is designed to meet diverse needs of students in key academic areas um, from independent learning, critical thinking skills, as well as skills for managing information. So um, you might like to read actually the project article that has been recently published in the Journal of Information Literacy. And you can find all the details in the description of the event if you want to have more information around this project. But at this point, of course, the most important thing is to introduce you to our speakers, Tiani Liu, Learning Advisor, and Dan Pulinger, Learning Development Manager, both working at the University of Leeds Libraries. And of course, you can find more information about both of them in the event description again. Um, but um, the most important aspect is to make this session conversational, as conversational as possible. And um, really, in order to do this, I'd like to encourage you to use the chat, as you have already been doing and introducing yourselves. But also, um, just to show you how much we um, want to um, make this more into a dialogue. We um, want to really uh, encourage you to um, start typing your questions even before the end of the session. Um, and we have two of our student interns in the chat, looking after the chat, Kadia and Cheko Faccio, and who will be able to um, um, take a note of your questions or encourage our speakers to um, look at them 
um, during the talk. Um, so today on the social media uh, channels, um, we have uh, our other committee members as well looking after this. So you may hear some key discoveries and thoughts. Um, and um, so it's one Haiti mindsets, our Twitter um, account. So I think we're ready to begin. We still have people coming in the, the session. That's why I'm taking more time. But, um, and we do have a few questions at the end already, but we're hoping that we'll get more from the audience. I think that's um, all for, from me, really. Uh, at this point, I would like to invite our speakers. Um, take your time to upload your presentation. And when you are ready, we are all ready to start as well. Hey, thank you, Dina. I'm just going to stop your screen sharing and then share uh, on my end. Let's see how this works. Um, are you guys seeing this um, screen? Is it looking yes. decent? Yeah, because as I said, I can't see Zoom uh, on my end um, anymore. So uh, this is going to be cool. All right. So, um, Danny, you just need to go to full screen. Full screen. Okay. Yeah, are you guys seeing this all right then? Yeah, it's new there. Yeah. Uh, the old nope. slide show. Uh, I should start. Are you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, are you guys seeing this okay then? Yes, that, that's working now. Thanks. Cool. All right, guys. Um, hello. So, um, hi, guys. Um, welcome to this uh, workshop. But as Dina said, it's going to be quite conversational session on um, supporting the academic skills transition for um, taught postgraduate students. Um, I'm Jiani. I'm Jiani Liu from the uh, uh, Library Learning Development Team from uh, Leeds, and I'm a, a, a learning advisor. And I've also got my colleague uh, Dan here. Dan, do you want to say hello? Hi everyone, yes, I'm, I'm Dan Pollinger from uh, the Learning Development Team and I, uh, I manage the team. Right, so um, today uh, we thought we're going to um, basically just uh, uh, at first get you guys to reflect, to discuss and to share um, what do you think are the biggest um, academic challenges that your students face in making the transition uh, to uh, the higher level, the M level uh, learning, uh, but also what do you expect your students to demonstrate at this level. So there will be an activity uh, on that. And from there, we're going to uh, basically share the findings from our literature review and also from our research on um, PGT transition and academic uh, experience. Um, after that, I will do a very quick uh, tour. I'll take you guys on uh, onto our Step Up to Masters online results site, and I will briefly introduce you to the results. Uh, and also, Dan is going to share how the results and our suite of workshops uh, has been used and has been received and has been like evaluated at Leeds. Uh, but without um, during our sharing, it's probably also very interesting to hear what you guys have been uh, doing uh, at your institution in terms of supporting this vital transition. So we thought towards the end of the workshop, we could have an open discussion on what uh, kind of provision that you guys have in place to support master's transition. And we'll share our future plans and our evaluation to wrap out the session. I hope this one sounds okay. and. Um, I am now going to open the first um, activity. Okay, so now I need to figure out the screen share again. But basically, if you guys now take out um, a mobile device and go to menti.com and use the code on the screen, uh, and then basically just type in um, what springs to your mind when you respond to the question on the screen, which is what had the biggest academic challenges you think that your students face when they are making that transition to PGT levels today. And I will also stick a link, a direct link to the Menti as well in the chat. So I'm just taking myself out of the sharing, I mean, off of the full screen, and then get the link. And I'm going to stick on to, into the chat. Okay, I hope this is okay. And then I'm going to switch, switch, switch screen to a different tab. So you now should be able to see this. Um, and if not, please let me know, okay, then I'll be able I'll do some jiggling act. 
Oh, there we go. We've already got people uh, typing in, means that this is working. Cool. Jenny, we have a, a message in the chat that some people are seeing black boxes over over parts of the screen, and I, I'm seeing those as oh, well. Oh, sure okay. Why. What is what is that? You what can is see the your screen, but sometimes other things. I don't know if you have other things popping up in your screen that are causing that. Is it still the case at the moment? Yeah. Oh, huh. oh, maybe it's a chat box. <laughs> I've got the chat box open. Is it better now? It is still I, the case. I see one at the top, but I don't know. Hmm. It's a bit better than it was. I can I can see the yes. I don't know if you just moved something then, but it, it just um, helped. Yeah. It All oh, right. I basically removed the chat box. <laughs> yes, it's okay. the chat boxes, I think. All right. So that's all right. I've, I've, um, I'll rely on you guys to tell me what is actually happening in the It's in the all session. visible now. If you just keep those boxes out of the out as far, that's it. Yeah, out of the way. Okay, cool. So we've so got quite a few in there now. <laughs> we've got research skills, we've got workload. Uh, confidence, uh, critical writing, that's like one of the biggest challenges. We've got, um, I guess, the, the, around the no, notion of critical analysis, critical thinking, criticality. We've got quite a few of those. Um, independent learning, independent work, the amount of work that students have to produce. Um, language being one of the barriers and all big challenge uh, workload um imposter syndrome that's a really uh, interesting one we've definitely hear students um expressing um some uh, i guess self doubts or, or just uh, uh perhaps the thoughts around that they um my experience low self-efficacy or um feeling unsure about um they're able to uh, meet the academic expectations at this level but they certainly are able to because um they're uh, you know, administrated into this level of learning but it is quite um um a commonly shared um challenge uh, as well as fear and a few other thoughts Okay, and then I think we, we, we've also got a few um, ideas around that um, some students might have had, uh, taken a break from academic learning and then it might be a while um, be, um, uh, from the previous academic experience to their master's uh, experience. Um, we've also got uh, information literacy and some other uh, posts around the students' backgrounds. Cool. So, um, I think it sort of just gives us like an, uh, um, a reflection, but also a way of showing that um, there are various, um, um, like a really big range of um, potential challenges that students may face when they make that transition to PDT levels today. And often that's um, almost like uh, affected or even, even determined by their previous academic backgrounds and that diverse uh, learning experience that they bring with them. Um, so going back to our presentation, um, Dan is going to talk now a little bit about uh, a review of literature in terms of what literature say are the biggest challenges for that uh, transition. Over to you now, Dan. Thanks, Janet. I think I might try showing my screen in the hope that we won't have any of the uh, pop-ups uh, in the way, if that's okay. So if you yeah, want sure, to, of uh, course. I'll just stop your sharing. And, I think uh, you can just overtake me. Yeah, no problem. I'll move to mine. Okay. Is that working? That's working cool. Yeah. Yeah, so you can participate see my screen. Excellent. Great, thank you. So, um, uh, I'm just going to give you a brief, brief review of the literature now, uh, which I think um, gave us um, a useful uh, grounding in terms of the <coughs> research that we wanted to do ourselves with, with our own students. Um, so first of all, uh, the literature obviously represents the fact that PGT students are a, a diverse group with different academic backgrounds and varying degrees of familiarity with the academic skills necessary for success at postgraduate level. Um, the literature also emphasises that early transition support, including explicit discussion of master's level expectations, will help students to identify their level of readiness 
and make use of learning opportunities to develop their skills. So a master's study is an intensive experience that requires students to hit the ground running. So it requires signposting and pre-arrival support. It's also recognised that there's often a gap between PGT students' readiness for study at this level and institutional assumptions about the support that's required. Um, so these might be assumptions about um, the level of their academic literacies uh, development. And in the past, the support has been insufficient um, to meet um, their actual uh, needs. Um, also, um, the literature suggests that PG2 students um, expect PGT master's level specific support and want to be treated differently to undergraduate students. Yet the experience of tutors is that the academic support needs of PGT students are similar to those um, offered uh, to undergraduate students. So I'm just going to move to the next slide. Hopefully that has worked OK. So just so that was talking about the literature more generally. Um, just to focus a little bit now on the um, student context at Leeds for, for PGT students and for master's students. And this was the context in which we were carrying out uh, our own research. So at Leeds, we've seen substantial increases in student numbers, in, in master's student numbers in recent years, and an increasing number of international students. Um, in fact, um, we've seen a 52.9% increase in PGT student numbers between 2015 and 2019-20, so over a five-year period, and 66% of our PGT students in 2020 were international. 46% uh, of the PGT students were Chinese students. We've also found that um, PGT students, master students, are disproportionately heavy users of our Skills at Library co-curricular service based in the library. So 49% of our individual users um, of our self-selecting options um, in 2019 were master students compared to them uh, comprising only 20% of the total student body. So they're making substantial use of our resources and are very keen to acquire additional support wherever it's available. What we found um, according to feedback that we've received on our support is that uh, master students prefer workshops and open sessions that are badged as only for masters. Uh, also, we have um, an online resource aimed at uh, undergraduate students, first year undergraduates, a, um, a transition resource and workshop su uh, suite called Flying Start, which is very successful, very popular, um, but is very much aimed at, at those first year undergraduates. Um, and is a, pitched at a very introductory level, but anecdotally, many PGT students also attend uh, the workshops that are offered as part of Flying Start. So this has made us very aware that perhaps there was a real need for support that wasn't being met as students make that transition um, to master's study. So I'm just gonna move to the next slide. Now, hopefully the audio will work on this. Um, I'm just gonna, Play video for you. If if not, Jenny, wave at me and I will start again. This is some students talking about um, their challenges at Leeds as they arrive. I think the biggest step up was the fact that you really have to work hard. I think in undergrad, sometimes you can get away with. It was just a bit quiet, Dan, if you want to. Uh, I'll make... just try again. I think the biggest step up was you really have to work hard. I think in undergrad, sometimes you can get away with. Oh dear. Is it stopped again? Let me just try again one more time for you with the volume. If not, please all turn the volume up on your devices. I'll try one more time. I think the biggest step up was the fact that you really have to work hard. I think in undergrad, sometimes you can get away with, you know, procrastinating quite a lot or doing that sort of stuff. But in masters, you don't have time to do any of that. You've really got to work a lot harder. You've got to organize your time much better. 
because in undergrad I only had three modules per semester and now I have five. So that's a lot more work. The number of credits are higher per semester than in undergrad. So it really pushed me to work a lot harder. Learning in UK is totally different with uh hmm. apologies, it's gone off again, wasn't it? I'll just bring it back to the second student. Harder. Learning in UK is totally different with uh, the study cell in China, because in China we only need to follow teachers' lead, and in this uh, this country we maybe learn a lot by ourselves, and the tutor maybe only gave the direction. We we need to learn further by ourselves. Well, it's been quite a while since I've studied, and um, so the traditional studies at Bradford. Uh, university in 2011 so not only was it a step from like years of part of education it was the whole upper level of academia basically I was struggling to basically get on top of the level of writing the level of the depth of reading and writing you've got to do. So undergraduate as we all know is a three-year program whereas master's is, more, is a one-year program so definitely there'll be a lot of work pressure a lot of deadlines like maybe in undergrads you get a one-month deadline but in your masters you have to complete the assignment in, more, in a week sometimes so you need to cope with those things and obviously definitely the end result is really nice in that case because you develop yourself to work in a very stressful environment which is very beneficial in a corporate world okay so that's part of a longer video um, that is embedded within our step up to masters resource which johnny is going to show you uh, in more detail um, in a few moments. Um, just to say a little bit more about um, our next steps uh, and, and the research that we carried out. So um, what we did was conducted research on the academic skills support needs and expectations of taught postgraduates with a view to developing our provision accordingly um, through creating high quality adaptable content and support. And we were also keen to challenge our own preconceived ideas and working practices in terms of PGT skills development. So we carried out large scale surveys of PGT students at Leeds at the beginning and end of academic years 2016-17 and 2017-18. And we had 2,756 respondents in total, which was fantastic. We were really pleased to receive that amount of data but then slightly daunted when we had to uh, process that data subsequently. But that was fantastic to get such a large data set. Focus groups were then conducted with PCT students to explore the survey responses in more detail and to identify preferred methods and timings of delivery of academic skills support. So the participants favoured um, a wide range of support methods, including in curriculum sessions and options for self-selection, and felt these should be available throughout their studies. There was also a strong steer towards giving students options to personalize their development. And participants also commented that they valued the opportunity given to them by this research itself to reflect on their own development needs. So we're obviously working to take all of that on board. So in terms of the specific topics that our research identified, um, this is what taught postgraduate students um, felt were their priority areas for support. So academic writing, academic reading, critical thinking, presentation skills, effective time and project management, and adapting to a different academic culture and expectations. So our key findings were that the academic development needs and expectations of individual PGT students are diverse and the key to addressing this challenge is to provide opportunities for students to reflect on their own development needs and to select and access a variety of academic support options according to their individual priorities and preferences. And I'm gonna go back to Jani now to explain how we acted on these findings. Over to you. Are we on mute at the moment, Jenny? Right, thanks, Dan. I think I'm just going to share my screen um, to um where i've actually got the results there we go are you guys seeing this or is this unsuccessful 
Oh, sure. uh, can you guys see the um, results now? Yes. Okay, nice one. All right. So this is the um the oh, results out. Got a box. Out... Now, Jenny. Got a box. Oh, there it's gone. <laughs> oh. There we go. Oh, okay. Well, I can't see a thing now in front, or like between me and the, and the actual oh, yeah. results. So I hope this is fine. Okay, cool. Uh, so this is how what we developed to um, respond to our um, research findings. Uh, results called Step Up to Masters. It's an online, it's an uh, totally open uh, and also mobile friendly uh, web-based results. Uh, and it also covers, so basically this, in terms of the structure of the results, we have uh, four parts of it from from um, your master's covering the academic expectations and then the transition, the independent learning aspect um, of master's experience to focusing more on how to take control of your learning by um, careful planning, by uh, proactive uh, participation in uh, lecture seminars and also engaging with literature, thinking critically, uh, as well as organizing and managing the uh, information load. Um, and then moving on to think about uh, students' own role in developing their academic um, uh, voice. So it's basically how uh, how to deal with the complexity, the higher level of learning, how to develop their argument using sources, and also ultimately to put forward a convincing um, um, line of argument by using uh, um, other, uh, using evidence and using their um, academic voice. Um, more importantly in this result, so as well as covering those key topics, especially highlighted by our uh, research participants, by the students, telling us what they found uh, challenging, what they found that would be a useful thing to know uh, when they are making that transition. So as well as, as all of that, we've um, specifically designed uh, this um, self um, self reflective also like in a self selection tool. Um, we named it how confident are you as like a question, but really it's just uh, uh, 10 questions or 10 areas of um, key skills uh, to reflect on in terms of, of their perceived confident level confidence level when they first uh, arrived uh, studying masters uh, with us at least. Um, so they could say I'm feeling um, somewhat confident with finding academic sources for my assignments, but I'm feeling maybe a little bit um, overwhelmed and not very confident with managing a large amount of uh, reading. Anyway, so after students done that, then uh, when they submit, the system will then generate them um, uh, like an uh, um, a personalized um, priority list of areas that they need to, uh, the, the we suggest them to focus their development upon um, based on what they told us in terms of their confident level, uh, uh, ranging from not very confident to uh, very confident. Um, so this is something that uh, students could do uh, as part of the results being uh, more self-reflective um, uh, as they transit into master's learning. Um, and really it's um, focusing on their personal development of what the next steps that they could take. So be them to participate, um, be able to be uh, coming to one of the workshops that we developed or perhaps borrowing uh, a skills book and then um, familiarizing themselves with those uh, key topics. So we are pretty, uh, putting the uh, the next steps into students' hands, let them self-select and, uh, and then self-define uh, their pathways to success at master's level. Okay, so as well as the uh, online results. Danny, oh, just okay. before we go um, on to yeah, the online results, sure. I just had a question in the chat about, oh. um, about okay. the web pages or creating a piece of software. So just say they are web pages that um, are open and, and available and, and Kirsten has put a link in, in the chat there. Thank you. Um, Johnny, could you just say a little bit about the tool that was used to create? Yeah, so do we results? use... Um, do we use Jadu? I'm actually, <laughs> I'm not 100% sure now. I haven't now spoken to our learning technologies for a while, but we've been using uh, like an HTML tool um, to create those, um, um, to create the site really. Um, so yeah, we need to rely on our learning technologies team to, to help. Yeah, so we've got some, um, 
but basically we've been developing the, the our suite of resources um, from flying star, which is a transition to university to our uh, dissertation results and also this one uh, i believe they're all based in the, the, the technology behind it is html and that's how much i know i'm really sorry but we can find out and email you um about the actual um the, the tool that was used to develop this um, and another thing to say is we've managed to embed, I think Dan showed you one of the video, videos, right, but we've managed to embed um, quite a significant amount of uh, student and staff um, uh, voice in these results. So there's loads of um, talking heads, loads of videos, uh, as well as some um, quotes from the research that students been telling us um, that we managed to put on the site. So it, it is, uh, I would say, uh, to a certain degree interactive even though it's uh, still a lot of text to uh, to get uh, your head around <laughs> okay so i'm just going to have a look, look at the chat uh, Maria, so yeah, this um, this result is open to um, anyone who has access to internet, I guess. Uh, so it's totally uh, open. And it's also under the licensing that uh, we definitely allow you to uh, reuse our content. Um, so any other questions before I switch back to the presentation? Cool, so um, just very briefly, as well as the online results, I guess you, you guys can see the screen, right? Um, yeah, there we go. Oh, there's a message. So yeah, there's a lot- um, Go back to sharing at full, the uh, full slides, Jenny. Is it all right here? That's it. Uh, I hope you guys don't have this uh, magical block again, or box it's again. The top of the screen. <laughs> it's on top. Oh. Maybe because my screen is too small. I'm using a laptop. I don't know. I don't really. I quite. I, I can't quite figure out. But um, yes. Yeah, so basically, I'm just saying now, uh, as well as the online results, we also developed a suite of uh, workshops to uh, go with the um, online results. The intention behind this was that we are we were, we, we were hoping that students would, um, well, basically that the. the the first year running this was uh, September 2019, and the hope was that students would come and they would actually engage and interact with uh, their fellow master students, sharing, discussing um, the um, academic challenges that they, they think that they are facing, making that transition, but really have that sense of uh, we're all in this together and we can um, develop our learning and sharing our fears and our, our challenges, as well as feeling perhaps the real assured uh, um, that plenty resources and plenty support available uh, to develop our, our uh, confidence in our skills. Um, so the first year running this, those sessions were face to face and subsequently we ran them uh, online in 2020 and then hybrid. So face-to-face -face as well as online in 2021, uh, covering the key topics on the screen. So from developing your academic confidence to managing your reading, uh, to academic voice and working in uh, diverse groups. Um, so Dan is now going to share how this result is being uh, received, at least. I'm just going to stop sharing. Thank you. Um, I'll just... Uh... Bring up the right slide by the way i found the name of the software it's called bootstrap so oh thanks dad used um to create the resource i'm just going to share uh, my screen again someone kindly reminded me that i didn't share the sound <laughs> on the video which is why it may not have uh, been very audible to you so apologies to everyone uh for that but you'll be able to find that video and uh any other content um relate um in the resource itself and we'll obviously share the slides uh, afterwards too. Now I've just lost you all from my screen, bear with me. Are you all still there? Uh, yes, we, and we can see the slide, which, which is cool. That's great. I can't see you at all, but I will carry on. <laughs> Thank you. So um, in terms of how the um, uh, resource and the workshops have been received, so we were really pleased with the amount of um, uh, engagement that we had with um, the resource in, in its first couple of years. 
So you can see in, in um, the last full academic year, 2020-21, we had nearly 16,500 um, page views for the resource and had lots of positive feedback from students. Um, uh, and uh, it was great to see comments like it took away some fear about going from undergrad to a postgrad. Um, the workshops were also really uh, well attended. Um, we had a large increase um, in 2020-21 to 1,631 attendees. I think being online um, certainly uh, played a part um, in that as well. So we were fully online um, during the first year uh, of the pandemic. Um, and those workshops, um, as I say, um, received very positive um, feedback uh, uh, overall. Um, and um, I'll explain a little bit more about some of the feedback uh, on the next slide. So uh, in terms of um, within the resource itself, um, we uh, had a, a feedback option for, for students to um, uh, to enter their comments into um, and to, to give a quick um, indication of how useful it was. Um, and pleasingly, um, all respondents um, in the first year it was launched agreed that the online resource had helped them to feel more confident about studying at master's level. So 66.7% strongly agreed, 33.3% somewhat agreed, which was fantastic. And then in terms of... Uh, next slide which does not seem to be oh there we go um the next slide uh relates to uh the workshops that we ran um this feedback was gathered at the end of each of the step put to masters workshops um 91.1 percent of respondents felt they'd learned something in the workshop that would improve uh the way they work which was fantastic um but also we intended these workshops to be an opportunity for socialization and community building and so anecdotally we saw lots of students um master students getting together meeting each other meeting students outside of their normal um uh, subject area so that was that was a real positive um, aspect of the sessions too so what have we been doing um since uh, the launch um of the resource and the workshops so we've been um we've carried out some small scale evaluation um uh, we carried out a subsequent survey of PGT students and we followed up on, on specific issues that we uh, wanted to find out more um, about so that we could develop the resource um, further and more appropriately. Um, so that included, as a result of that feedback, um, adding last year some additional content on seminar participation and also on uh, assessment uh, criteria. Um, and... Um, we we're really pleased um, in 2020 to receive uh, the Digital Award for Information Literacy um, awarded by the Lilac Conference and the Information uh, Literacy Group. So, so that was um, a great award for, for our efforts and, and for those of our learning technologies team uh, colleagues. And we we're very grateful for that. Um, for last academic year, um, we um, put quite a bit of effort into embedding the online resource and our workshops into the institutional transition officer uh, officer offer at um, the University of Leeds. So we, um, particularly with the move to all online last year and uh, because of the pandemic, there was an institutional effort to actually provide um, a more coordinated approach to welcome induction and transition. And we made sure that Step Up to Masters was at the heart of that um, for PGT students. And um, we also um, worked hard to ensure it was within the departmental induction programs as well. So this helped to ensure that all PGT students were directed to the resource at the pre-arrival welcome stage and meant that we weren't providing our academic literacy support in isolation. It was fully embedded into the institutional approach and also helped us to ensure that the support that we offer um, was more visible to um, both academic and support staff uh, within schools, within departments uh, as well. Um, and for the pandemic last year, we also adapted our workshops to online delivery for 2020-21. Um, uh, we've moved to an, a more mixed model for this academic year um, as we transition back to doing more face-to-face -face, uh, activity. And as was mentioned at the beginning of the session, we published an article in the Journal of Information Literacy, which came out a couple of months ago, um, that um, goes into a lot more detail about our research and has a lot more detail our research findings, if you'd like to take 
a look at that subsequently. I'm just going to mention our future plans before we go back to the uh, next um, area for um, the next activity, the next discussion. So um, we do plan some further evaluation um, of uh, the resource in terms of um, uh, looking at student preferences for online or face-to-face -face delivery, ensuring we get the balance correct for that. We also want to know more about student awareness um, of the support that's um, available to them from skills at library, uh, and particularly in terms of uh, the master's focus support. Um, we want to know more about the impact and value of the support and how it's perceived. And we want to see how our resource fits into that overall um, PGT student experience. Uh, we also want to investigate more opportunities for peer support and networking um, in our physical um, spaces that we have on campus. So within one of our libraries, the Laidlaw Library, we have a skills zone and we want to do more to direct master students towards that skills zone, to take ownership of it and to build on um, those relationships they may have started to, to make with fellow students uh, within our workshops um, and perhaps um, uh, encourage more um, peer support and buddying between them. Um, we also are trying to uh, acquire some case studies of um, successful embedded provision where we've embedded this resource and other master's student um, support within uh, their programmes. We're also contributing to further development of the institutional offer. There is a PGT Student Experience Commission um, that started this summer, which is student-led, looking at student experience, and, and we hope to get some useful data and information from that that can help develop our support. And there's an institution-wide curriculum redefined project happening, setting out principles and processes for um, the design and redesign of programmes. And again, we're looking to ensure that our master's support, our support for developing their academic skills is, is fully incorporated into those processes and principles. And finally, we're also looking at the other end of the process. So not the transition into PGT study, but that transition from PGT, PGT study potentially into postgraduate research study um, and are developing a resource to help students consider whether PGR study might be uh, for them. Okay, so I'm gonna just pass back now to Gianni to introduce our yeah, panel. Dan, if you just click on the next slide, it'd be all right. Um, okay, will do. Uh, so without the, the last 15 minutes also of this session, um, it's really just open for discussion, but also for, for like um, results sharing. I created this um, Padlet and I'll stick a link into the chat. Um, but of course, guys, you are welcome to just chip in, uh, switch on your mic and the camera. And then uh, we thought perhaps a good thing to um, ask you to respond to is um, how do you support that uh, that this challenging transition to PGT study? Do you or have you been? Um, uh, developing any similar online resources or have you um so i'm just going to think the screen share stop but what i'll do is i'll share the um it stops is it i apologize it's all right sorry just uh i think it's just how how this works <laughs> Yes, so I hope you can see this Padlet. We thought probably a, a good idea to just sort of like uh, discuss and share um, anything that's been created at, at you and in your institution or any ideas that you would like to explore to, to, um, to create. Um, have you been developing any workshops to support your student transition or do you have any similar online resources? Um, and also what have you been finding difficult as a practitioner or as a lecturer or as a, like a librarian uh, to um, support this uh, level of transition. And especially if you, uh, you are planning or you have been um, embedding um, PG, PGT uh, transitional support into the curriculum, what have you been finding difficult or exciting or what works or what doesn't work. Um, so I'll leave this uh, floor to you guys now. If you could uh, either share on the Padlet, which I've got on the screen, or you can just let us know in the chat or switch on your mic, or you can raise any questions. Is that all right, guys? Does this sound like a plan? <laughs> I put the link in the chat as well for everyone. So hopefully they will see on there. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm gonna still see the box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <super laughs> box. 
Yes, but um, now I think it disappeared now. Um, thank you so much uh, for this very, very good presentation. I was very uh, impressed with the number of views and the, the data you collected. I know for myself, because I'm running a project, a quite similar project actually, um, involving self-assessment, maybe more into the digital literacy skills of students. Um, but I, what I um, have been asked before is the, the whole element of self-assessment, particularly how, um, you know, when to self-assess at the beginning, at the end, and whether students need more advanced skills and whether we need to um, have um, the academics on board and whether we need to embed that into teaching and learning. So there's lots and lots of questions. I think I have about 10 questions, but- yeah, no um, problem. <laughs> But I think it's not about me, it's about our audience. And I think we do have a question already there. Uh, maybe we can start with that one. Uh, do you wait for students to arrive and mm. start? Have you considered if students could reflect on skills and start developing them using the resource? Um, so what are your views on that? This is a really good question, Jen. So I should respond first, then, and then you can uh, chip in whenever you want. Yeah. Um, so the, our intention now is actually to so currently uh, because how how we um, how we can communicate the results to the students. So it's basically um, we practically can't really reach the students until they registered and we, until they are actually at least. Um, so and the most most of the time when they um, when they registered, it means that they are at, either physically at least or at least uh, started online. All right. So so this is the point that they would then get access or, or, or get told about the results. But ideally, and also this literature suggests as well, because because the um, the intense um, nature of um, of uh, one year, especially one year uh, Tao Masters pro uh, program. Um, ideally, if we could get to students before uh, they even register or when they are considering about doing a master's level uh, like a, a, a study, then uh, it would actually be really useful for them to reflect deeply on uh, the the elements of uh, independent learning, the elements of like managing the workload, et cetera. And it will actually also um, help them to make more informed decision and to help them to um, prepare better over the summer if they have like an, uh, a few months uh, perhaps like between um, the, the uh, be a job or be like an undergrad learning or be um, traveling between uh, the international country to uh, to the UK. So basically having that uh, period of time to work through the results and, and, and think through their, uh, their, their transition, that would be really good. But unfortunately, currently, uh, even though we would like to tell the students about the results, we actually uh, haven't managed to find a pathway to them. Um, only just only one um, exception being the uh, um, January cohort in 2021, when the university didn't know whether international students, especially, could travel to the UK due to COVID uh, in the academic year. We had uh, a cohort of students started in January 2021, and um, between September and January, we were able to share loads of resources and then um, put together some online learning um, opportunities for them. And uh, Step Up to Masters was pretty much featured in that uh, pre-arrival offer. And we did see evidence, uh, students telling us, as well as um, um, some um, research evidence, I think, based on the evaluation of that uh, particular cohort, that students really uh, enjoyed and really found that um, pre-arrival uh, community building and um, um, socializing with their fellows uh, really uh, valuable. So thanks for that question, Jen. I hope I answered it. Yeah, thanks. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. And I know we have several questions we thought of at the beginning. And um, one of the questions I know, um, Kirsten, you had, I don't know if you're around, you can hear us, Kirsten, and you would like to ask your question. Um, it was about, uh, if I remember well, in relation to finding and evaluating um, skills. Yeah, yeah. Can yes. you hear me okay, Dina? Yeah. 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 Um, so, uh, Dan and Gianni, as a librarian, obviously, I'm, I was quite interested in, when I was reading your paper uh, that quite a low number of students identified finding and evaluating information as a priority area for support. Um, I think those figures were around 13% at the start of the year and around 16% at the end of the year. 
And I just wondered if that was actually borne out by low demand for support in that area over the same time scale. I think um, uh, in terms of the um, uh, leads are particular support for, for finding and um, managing information, a lot of that is embedded into um, the curriculum already. So I suppose it's quite hard to measure the student demand and expectations because we've already provided it and it's there and it's compulsory for them. Um, I think it might be a reflection that students have had a lot of support in the area before they go to master's study or some students have had a lot of support in the area, though it may also just reflect that, um, uh, um, dare I say, some complacency on the part of some of those students as to, as to the um, um, to their to their skills in the, in that area. I think the particular focus we had was on the managing of the information they find and that information overload and trying as as was mentioned. I think in the um, mentee earlier on um, and trying to to help students um, uh, both manage and use the information that they found. I think that's where it, we felt that the, the focus um, should lie. Jani, do you want to add to that? Uh, yeah, so um, to respond to the, um, the uh, uh, students' comments on managing information, we created um, a section on organizing information on the, on the actual results. I think there were comments on they found it challenging to, um, because of the sheer amount of information that master's level study generate, find it difficult to manage, to organize and to actually stay on top of the reading. Um, and, and I guess the, um, evaluating information and also the, the selecting, uh, um, perhaps now explicitly, but maybe may not have been mentioned explicitly by students a lot, but then definitely comes like explicitly through the uh, critical analysis and critical use of sources sure. uh, that students have been finding challenging. Um, and also, I think we've also had a, one a topic on dealing with complexity, and that's also um, something that we respond to students' um, uh, comments on. They found uh, at master's level, there isn't um, always going to be one way, or me, or at, 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 at any level anyway, but I guess the, the more at master's level, there's a various way of responding to a topic issue and how to make that decision and how to actually uh, take a more informed um, approach Approach to their analysis. So we've um, had that uh, topic covered. Um, I think it's about yeah. them finding their own voice and, and how it's how they engage and synthesize with the source, engage with and synthesize the information that they found mm. and bring their original perspective into it is that's an expectation of, of mm -hmm. particularly of master's level study that um, that takes them that, that next step in terms of, of their information literacy. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I think I would like also to invite um, our student interns because we'd like to have the master student perspective here. And I know that um, we had a couple of questions coming uh, from our student interns. Um, so I'd like to invite either Katia or Jack Faso to ask the question. There was a, a question about critical thinking and whether it should be taught earlier in higher education. Um, if you can please remind me who asked that question. Hi, that would have been me, Katia. Okay, Katia, thank you. <laughs> yes, um, I was reading the article and I realized that you had a high level of students requiring assistance, support with relation to critical thinking. And it made me think of our own context here in Barbados because I work at a Tibet institution and I find that that is a major issue for us. And I think we would more count as, yes, higher education, but tertiary. So I was wondering if you think, because I mean, by the time they reached your level, they would have passed mine. And I was wondering if, it, in your opinion, if that is like something you think should be integrated um, before they even reach us, like probably like primary school or so. Absolutely, I, I think there's a there's a challenge in in um, in the UK at the moment in in terms of. Um, uh, a move towards rote learning and towards um, uh, uh, focus on exams um, at, at secondary, at primary, well, even at primary, but primarily secondary level. And I think that that um, impacts negatively on the skill set of, of students. They're, they're not prepared as independent learners in the way that we would 
um, ideally like them to be. So I think that, you know, there is a knock on effect from um, their experiences um, at school uh, into, into what happens um, and the support they need. So, so they are, and, and that will, and that confidence, those confidence levels could remain low through to, through to master's study, absolutely. I think critical thinking is really at the heart of, of being an academically literate student and, and engaging actively, being an active contributor to your to your discipline. You, you really need to um, be able to, to be an active um, participant and contributor to, to that community, not to um, uh, just passively accept um, uh, information. So, um, yeah, it's 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 a it's a it's a massive um, issue, I think, in terms of um, uh, needing to be covered um, from from a very early age. Totally agree. I think to also um, on that um, at university level um, and also again at, at master's level, um, critical thinking may look slightly differently in different in disciplines at, at different level. I think part of this is to uh, for us at working universities to give to offer students different tools and resources to then help them to demonstrate that level of critical analysis. So they would come with perhaps the way of thinking or um, um, I mean, I would hope, but anyway, it's, it's also because uh, uh, I'm from a, a, a background, I often um, get told that we, um, <laughs> we, we were not being expected to engage critically. But actually, I, I, after years of working on this topic, I do believe that we all have that just ability, it's just whether we actually have the tools and have the knowing how critical thinking, how critical analysis look like at master's level in education or in engineering. And I think part of our job is then to create different toolkits and different resources to enable students to actually um, um, basically mine their own potential and really be able to demonstrate their level of critical analysis at this higher level. I'm just going to embarrass Jani as well. I've just put a link in the, in the chat to, um, to a MOOC that, that Jani and, and a colleague Michelle Schneider created on critical thinking at university, um, which, which you may um, want to have a look at um, after this talk. Um, and that obviously is, is very much designed to help with that transition um, into what's expected in terms of independent learning and thought. Um, I, I just, uh, thanks, Dan. I just have one more thought. I, I realize the time. Um, I, I thought also um, if one of our job, uh, one of the key things about our job is to demystify some of those concepts. So students often hear critical analysis, lack of criticality. What does that really mean? And I think if then we give them some examples, we actually tell them this is what we expect um, of you by uh, comparing contrasting uh, arguments, by looking at evidence, by evaluating information, then that actually helps students think, oh, actually, you know what? I think I've been doing that for quite a while. I just didn't realize this is what is, what is expected of me at this level. So I think um, that, um, again, the supporting transition is pretty much around the helping students to understand the academic expectations, but also demystifying some of the, the, the uh, expectations and some of the uh, terms and norms using in uh, academic in academia yeah. excellent we are all very inspired by your work and you can see the comments coming through thank you so much for saying the work you do at leeds uni is always great and the mooc is excellent so i think everybody um will join my perspective about you know how great this presentation has been i know we had our technical problems but at the end of the day we're all human beings and things happen most important is actually to share information and this is what this community is about and we hope we can keep on going <laughs> and if anyone here would like to share their work and get everybody together again that would be fantastic get in touch with us and we can organize everything uh, thank you all so much for being here. Uh, I don't know if the panel had any information to share, and um, Gianni and Dan, but if uh, there is any ideas um, in the Padlet, uh, maybe you'll be happy to share that with us afterwards and we can post everything. And um, so you get the recording and you'll also get any other information that was shared today. Right, I think that's all we had time for. Um, for today, uh, what remains is to say um, thanks everybody and stop the recording and um, have a nice evening everybody and hope to see you again soon at another one. Okay, bye bye.